Yo, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back. Uh, this video is going to be a kind of a, a quick uh, kind of uh, new player friendly guide on how to use the basics of Path of Building. Uh, this is a tool that a lot of veterans of Path of Exile have been using for a long time. And in the recent uh, days, they've released a version for Path of Exile 2. And basically what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to input everything you've got in game, including your gear, your passive skill tree, and then check your damage, check different relevant stats. You can even compare different uh, points on the skill tree to see how beneficial they'll be for your build, as well as you can input and manipulate gear and see what's going to be upgrades and whatnot so that you can save money on gear that you're thinking about maybe buying from the trade site and actually see if it's an upgrade before you have to purchase it. So this is an amazing tool for you know both saving you money and time and for planning builds. You can build your entire character within Path of Building first before putting it into, you know, trying it to build it in game. So maybe you'll find out within Path of Building that the build doesn't work, or maybe you'll find out it's really strong. Um, so this is just a really great tool to kind of save you a lot of time and headache uh, going through the process of building a character that ends up just sucking, you know? So uh, yeah, anyways, I'm gonna be going over the basics here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do when opening Path of Building is of course to check for an update. They are consistently updating this to be, um, you know, compatible with all the latest features of Path of Exile. And um, it, although it's not perfect yet, there's definitely still some things they need to work on and some things that they can't track quite yet. Um, Want to make sure you have the latest version just so that you have everything working as intended. Now, moving on, we're going to be uh, starting off here on the tree page. This is your passive skill tree here. And you're going to basically go into your game and you're going to look at your passive skill tree and you're going to be trying to copy this one to one. Uh, if you're you know, using a existing character, if you're making a new character and you want to theory craft, well, then you're just going to start picking points and, you know, seeing how the damage is improved. So we're going to first uh, start by just copying our existing character to be able to get re results on, you know, what kind of damage we're at, what kind of defenses we have. Um, so I copied my tree one to one here. Um, some cool tricks you can use, actually, is while you're allocating attributes, if you hold I, it will always allocate int. If you hold S, it will always allocate strength. And if you hold down D, it'll always allocate dexterity. So that can be a huge time saver instead of having to click on each attribute and then select the one from this drop down menu. So that'll be a huge time saver. But basically, you want to put in your entire tree exactly as it is in game. And then we are going to move on to the items that we have in our passive skill tree. So I have a lot of jewels here. And you could basically just go in game, hover over the item and click control C. And then that will copy that item. And then we're going to go to the items tab. And here in the items tab, there's this box. And as, as long as you click inside this box, you can control V to copy whatever item you have on your clipboard into the, into the path of building. And now we can take that item and we can socket it in. Here's all our sockets. We can socket it into that socket. So here on the left side, now that we're in the item menu, this is where all your gear is gonna be put. And uh, like I said, it's basically, you just take any piece of gear, you control C, control V in this box, It'll add it to this menu here, and then you just drag it over into the correct slot. So for me, I'm gonna put my bow here in my main slot, and boom, we've got our bow equipped. You're gonna to wanna to do that with all of your gear. So once you've got your uh, passive skill tree filled out, once you've got all your gear equipped, then we're gonna move on to the skill panel. So in the most recent update, they actually added support for uh, levels from items. So you only need to have the level of your skill gem be equal to the actual level in game. And then those plus five levels I'm getting from my bow are already being calculated as you can see here. So yeah, all these skill gems in this window, you're just gonna wanna make sure that they're the same exact level as you see in game on the actual skill gem itself, not the added levels gained after uh, additional uh, levels are being added from items. It's worth noting that a skill like gas arrow, and this is uh, true for many skills, has different components to it. Now, these are all a little bit different, and you, as you can see, the damage changes, so you wanna make sure you're using whichever one is more relevant to you. Um, so in here in game, we have the arrow component, the poison cloud component, and the explosion component. My build relies only on the explosion component. That is the damage I will be dealing. And so we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have that selected here in Path of Building on the left window here as the drop-down menu, select explosion. And so now we're tracking a level 26 gas arrow with all my support gems hitting four times at the same time with four arrows and doing the explosion portion of damage. So this is how you set up your main skill to get an accurate DPS value. Then of course, you're gonna to wanna to set up all your different other skills and put all the different supports in there. 
Keep in mind, not every single one of these is going to be tracked properly. Um, I think Wind Dancer, for example, or not Wind Dancer, uh, Ghost Dance, for example, does not uh, actually is not tracking the damage mitigation it's giving you in game yet. So I could turn this on and off, and it will not change my effective hit pool. Although it is doing a lot to uh, increase my defenses, so not everything is perfect just yet. I'm sure they'll be updating it in the future to ha have you know support for these types of skills. But for now, it's the best we can do. And so yeah, once you put all your skills in, once you've got your items in, once you've got your tree set up, then you're gonna be getting, you're gonna start to get some uh, numbers here that are pretty close to accurate, although they're not perfect. And that is when we go to the configuration menu. This is the most important at getting the most accurate data. So there are a lot of conditional effects that happen in this game. Um, so a good example here is Immolate. This is a skill, this is a support gem on my main skill, that is giving me 30% of damage as extra fire against ignited enemies. Now, how does, how does the game or how does the software know that I'm igniting enemies? Well, that is actually part of this configuration menu. So here is the enemy ignited. I want to make sure I check that on. As you can see, my damage goes up by 3 million by just checking that on. So these are the conditional uh, effects that you're going to want to check to make sure that they're all uh, being applied so you can get your actual damage value. Because my build is constantly igniting enemies. I have a helmet that just ignites nearby enemies in my presence. So they're always going to be ignited. Now, moving on, there are some passives on the tree that are also conditional. Like this one gives me increased damage if I've dealt a critical hit in the past eight seconds. Well, that again is another configuration that we can set. Have you dealt a non-crit recently? Yes. Have you dealt a crit recently? Yes. So I'm going to make sure I want to select those. Now, one thing that is not being tracked properly yet is actually shock. And that is where a lot of damage can be coming from, especially for builds that are scaling their shock magnitude. But right now, the shock is limited to the max shock of 20, which is in Path of Exile 2 is the minimum shock that you apply. So if you're applying more than a 20% shock, you're going to want to have to go into something here called the custom modifiers list. And this is where you're going to manually put in stats that are not yet being tracked properly in Path of Building. So for me, I am doing a 41% shock. And then if I use the overcharge support in my main skill, I can actually increase that up to a 68% shock. But for normal use, I am not using the overcharge support. So I'm going to be putting a 41% more damage against shocked enemies line here that is going to calculate that damage. And that is a lot of extra damage. Um, shocked increases the amount of damage the enemy takes. But since we cannot use that line, we have to do the more damage line, which is still an accurate way to describe the amount of damage it'll be giving us. Now, um, there's also things like this ring I've got, the Sekima's ring. And this ring is interesting because it has a jewel socket. But there's no way to input a jewel into this ring currently. So what I've done, I've gone to my passive skill tree. I've just allocated another socket way over here. And I see here that it's giving me 20 strength. So I've made sure to put minus 20 strength here. Um, to kind of compensate. And then this ring also has another line on it that says uh, lightning resistance is unaffected by area penalties. And those area penalties are the negative resistances you get as you go through the campaign. So basically this ring is giving me 60 lightning resistance. But again, because this line is red, it means that path of building does not recognize it and cannot uh, you know, quantify it. So we're gonna make sure that we put this in our custom modifiers list. So we're getting plus 60 lightning res, minus 20 strength, and that's just for that jewel socket. Now, Grim Feast is another buff that a lot of people use, which is going to give you up to 100% more energy shield as you're going through maps. So if you want to track your total energy shield with Grim Feast, you can, of course, put 100% more energy shield here. Um, weapon swaps are also not supported yet. So if you're using a weapon swap for maybe curses or maybe a mark or something, you want to make sure that you have all the different weapon swap effects that you're going to be gaining on a boss manually inputted here. So I put enemies you mark take 10% increased damage, 10% blind effects against marked enemies, enemies you mark cannot deal critical hits, and calling strike against enemies you mark. Those are all the different relevant stats that I'm gaining. And finally, probably the most important thing is my ascendancy here. I'm playing an invoker. This critical hits ignore non-negative elemental monster resistances, and I am critting a majority of the time, and on targets that have critical weakness, which I'm getting from my Eye of Winter, I'm going to be critting all the time, 100% of the time. Um, as you can see here, my crit chance against enemies that have elemental weakness is 99%. So basically, um, on 99% of my hits, I'll be ignoring all non-negative elemental resistances. 
But because this line is red, that's a good indicator that will show you that this is not being properly calculated yet in path of building. And so we're gonna have to go and manually add that. So I've just added a couple lines or three lines here. Damage penetrates 100% lightning, 100% fire, and 100% cold resistance to make sure that uh, the game is acknowledging that I am ignoring those resistances. And then the last relevant box here in the configuration tab is the quest reward menu. And here you're gonna be selecting what you selected for your relic in act two, what you selected from the Venom Crypts in act three, and then in cruel difficulty, again, what you selected from your relic and your Venom Crypt reward. Now, moving on, there are some other features that are pretty important here for when you're looking for items to maybe use on your character. And the first one is this window down here. This has all the different uniques in the game and you can search these by name and you can add them to your build if you wanted to try out a new unique. Now what's interesting here is you can actually search and filter these uniques by what they're giving you. So if you're just looking for the highest DPS unique, you could filter by full DPS and it'll be organizing those uniques in order of full DPS. So for me, it's telling me that Thrill Steel here, which gives Onslaught is gonna be the highest DPS unique for me. And uh, this is an easy way to filter by that. If you want defensive capabilities from your unique, you can go and look for effective hit pool and figure out what unique is gonna make you the tankiest. And for me, it's gonna be the Blessed Bonds which is giving me a bunch of energy shield and evasion apparently. And then once you've clicked on an item and this works for rare items as well, um, and you can you know like copy one into, uh, into your uh, window here from in game, is you can actually modify the item. So you can decide what the rolls are, if they're high or low rolled, you can corrupt the item, you can add quality, you can even edit the actual text of the item and change some of the stats if you wanted to on like a rare item. Uh, maybe you're you know interested on how much damage a like mirror bow would give you. And there's no way to copy that mirror bow from the trade site. Well, you can actually recreate that item entirely within here. So I could go, I could select bow, I could select expert dual string, and I could actually create a mirror bow by hand uh, in game and then test that out and see how much damage it would give me. So you could select which stats you want, um, you can increase the values or de decrease the values, you can even select which runes you want, you can corrupt the item, you could basically create any item you want in game just like that. And that'll be a good way to test different items uh, and see what's actually the best DPS increase for your, your build at the moment. Uh, another cool thing is um, things like Megalomaniac. Um, these are uh, jewels that allocate skill points on your tree um, and you can buy these. And so, uh, you know, crafting one of these in Path of Excel or Path of Building is gonna be super helpful at figuring out how good that Megalomaniac jewel is actually for your build. So this one is giving me Doomsayer and Fulmination. And as we can see, if I was to remove this jewel, I would lose 5.9% of my DPS. So I know that this jewel on its own is giving me 5.9%. And that is because this Fulmination point over here, which is granting me, is giving me 40% increased damage with hits against ignited enemies, and my build is always igniting enemies. So that is a great point to have. Now this Doomsayer uh, point that it's giving me, this is not gonna increase my DPS because it's a quality of life anoint. It is giving me Herald area of effect and Herald, Herald damage. That is not gonna increase my main skills damage, but that is still a really nice anoint to have. And because I was able to get a Megalomaniac with this Doomsayer uh, point on it, I was able to anoint a better damage anoint, which I have here, Storm Charged. So kind of when you're buying these Megalomaniacs, just look for something that's gonna either free up your anoint slot or a point that is just way too far away to grab normally from pathing um, and look for the, you know, the best point you can. Now, how do you figure out what the best point on the passive skill tree for you is? Well, the way that we're gonna be figuring that out is actually to use a tool here called Show Power Node. And by using this drop down menu, we can actually select what we're looking for. If we just wanna find out what are the best DPS points, we can select full DPS. Maybe if we wanna figure out what's the best for tanking, we can figure out that based on the effective hit pool here or the effective maximum hit taken if we just wanna be able to survive one shots. Uh, but this drop down menu is super helpful. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna select full DPS here and then it's going to scan the entire passive skill tree to figure out what points are gonna increase your full DPS by the most. And I've already done that here. The points that are uh, bright red are the ones that are really good. And the points that are like darker uh, red are gonna be not quite as good, but you don't have to rely on the color. What you could do here is open up the show power report button. 
And that is going to give us a nice drop down menu. And it's going to show us actually the highest damage points based on their full DPS, as well as what points are the most effective per point. And that is calculating based on how far they are away from us based on the travel points take, uh, that it'll take to get to them. So I'm going to select full DPS here. And as I can see here, the mark for sickness is the highest damage point that I could possibly get. And maybe you'll use your anoint on that. Um, or I can select per point and I can see that here cooked, which is only three points away from me, is uh, the highest per point. Now, some of these are conditional, like this one requires you have an active flask. So I'm not a huge fan of that one. That's why I haven't picked it uh, for, for me uh, normally. But um, this is an easy way to find what the best points are nearby. Now, you can also select uh, show allocated. And this is going to show the points that you've already picked on your passive skill tree. So you'll be able to see uh, how good they are or how bad they are and maybe find a better option. Um, so yeah, that's using the show power report, super useful tool for figuring out how to best path through the passive skill tree. All right, so finally, once you've created your build and you've got everything uh, you know, perfectly uh, entered and you know, getting all the results, all the numbers that you are you know, expecting, um, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and maybe create a link or you know, save it so you can save it and this will you know, save to your computer or you could share it with other players. If you wanna share your build, your path of building with other players, you can go here and you can generate a link and you want to click share and it's gonna create a link to the path of building two website. You're gonna copy that. And then if I was to go and put that link into my, uh, you know, into my uh, search bar here, it'll bring up my build here. I can take this code that is gonna generate. I can copy this. And then if I wanted to go new, um, I'm going to copy that code into the import window and we're going to end up at the exact same point uh, with the exact same path of building. So that is how you can share and import and export your uh, path of building uh, characters. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be, of course, putting a link in the description where you guys can go and download this amazing tool and start using it today. And I hope I did a good job of covering all the basic features. There's a lot more complicated stuff that goes on here behind the scenes with stuff like this calculation uh, window here. But I try to just cover a very entry level, you know, uh, beginner guide on how to use it at a baseline. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.